I'm Chris Marvin. Um, I am, for mission continuous purposes, mostly from Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, I live in Philadelphia now. Um, I was the first Mission Continues fellow. I was one of the first Mission Continues Veterans Outreach Coordinators. Um, and I joined the Mission Continues on staff uh, earlier in 2009. I was a Army aviation officer. I flew Black Hawk helicopters. Uh, primarily stationed in Hawaii and I did one tour in Afghanistan uh, where I was wounded um, and I retired, I was medically retired as an army captain. What uh, I was in a helicopter crash on the Afghanistan-Pakistan border in 2004. I broke both of my legs, my foot, I broke one arm, I shattered my face um, and I sustained injuries to both of my knees, both of my hips and both of my shoulders which most people more commonly refer to as their whole body. <laughs> the, the very first things that went through my mind after realizing that both my mother and my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, were going to be very disappointed in me because they told me to stay safe and not get hurt. Um, the, you know, the next thing that went through my mind was the, the safety of my crew and the passengers who are on my aircraft. Um, and, and to me, that has always... I guess I've always been proud of myself for having that to be my first thought. Um, that I was really concerned with, with the, the people around me. I think it's, it's just what the military instilled, is me, instilled in me as far as leadership. Um, how you behave as a leader, how you care for those uh, below you in the military chain of command. Um, and, and therefore, once I was in the hospital and recovering from my injuries, I think that's one of the things I missed the most, is that I was no longer uh, responsible for the safety and well-being of the soldiers uh, with whom I developed a trust, with, with whom I developed these relationships, I'd gone to combat with, trained with prior to that. Um, they were still over there and they were still doing their duty, but I was back um, in the hospital in Hawaii recovering from my injuries. Now, I didn't feel a great sense of loss because I knew, knew the people that would take over for me would do just as good of a job at leading our unit as I was. Um, but at the same time, uh, I'm missing a purpose. Um, and it was imperative, I think, for me to find, to, to, to reestablish some sort of purpose for myself. And if it wasn't leading a platoon of Black Hawk helicopters, uh, either something else in the military or something else beyond it. It, it was just incredibly important that I found that. I was listening to NPR uh, one day driving my car in Hawaii in um, October of 2007. And I heard a piece um, called My Grandfather's War Stories. And the gentleman was talking about uh, the stories his grandfather told him, how they were funny when he was younger and more realistic when he got older. And then sort of compared and contrasted with the stories he had heard from soldiers of, of today's conflict and how there were similarities, even though there's obviously a great difference between those generations, but one of the similarities was humor. Um, and he actually said that uh, he laughs along with the amputee who jokes about losing $500 worth of tattoos, but he knows how real his pain is when he tells him that his only regret is that he did not stop enough shrapnel with his own body to keep his squad mate from getting hit. And of everything I've heard and everything I've read about the current conflicts, still the only thing that's really, really touched me to the core. That really was able to extrapolate on the way I felt about my service and the way I felt about my relationships with soldiers. Um, and it, it, it made a there's there's a there's a parallel to the way I felt at the end of my helicopter crash that you know how's everybody else doing and that's the important part um, and that's what this soldier thought that you know he was disappointed he couldn't stop more shrapnel it's absurd but it but it made all the sense in the world in the world to me um, and the piece was by Ken Harbaugh and at the end of the the piece they said that he was the exec executive director of the mission continues and that. 
Uh, they help wounded veterans to volunteer in their communities. And to me, that was exactly what I should be doing. I, th I thought to myself, it's what I should be doing. That is a way that, to fulfill this, this purpose for leadership, for service, that I should be volunteering in my community. Uh, I'm a wounded veteran, and I don't need the handouts. I don't need the charity. I, I was doing fine. I was well taken care of. But what I needed was an opportunity, uh, a place to be challenged, a place to excel uh, on my own and, and because of maybe the training I got in the military or the experiences I'd had through uh, recovering from my injuries and perseverance, but I thought vol volunteering somewhere could offer me that opportunity. So I contacted NPR and NPR contacted Ken and within 12 hours I had an email in my inbox from Ken Harbaugh and the rest is sort of history. Uh, so my fellowship being the first one was a, a little bit different than uh, some of the ones we've, we're doing these days. Um, but I was basically bringing the, the Mission Continues project to Hawaii. Um, at the time, the Mission Continues existed exclusively in Eric Wrighton's living room in Washington, D.C. And um, not that taking it to Hawaii is the first step in a national campaign, but it was the step that I that I could take a part, take part in. Um, so I brought it to you know where I was. I brought it to my community, and, and there are, you know, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Army bases on the island of Oahu, and it was it was fertile ground. There were plenty of wounded soldiers and service members and veterans to uh, to, to tell about the project. So um, I did that for a few months um, until I was able to start volunteering more regularly and actually kind of incorporate my volunteer work with the Mission Continues into my active duty uh, duty day. And, and the military allowed me to volunteer 25 hours a week for the Mission Continues for about a year, uh, which really was what got me started in, into um, the national level leadership aspect at the Mission Continues. I, soon after being injured, received all kinds of charity. And the first Christmas I got hurt, I had a $500 check in the mail from a large, national, prominent nonprofit that helps wounded veterans. And I thought to myself, why did I get this check? What am I going to do with this $500? Now, if I were in, in trouble financially, or had medical bills to pay, or my family needed something, then it would be very welcome. But they didn't know me, and they didn't know whether or not I had any of those problems. They just sent the check. Um, I didn't have any of those problems, luckily, so I didn't put it towards you know, bailing myself out of debt, for example. Um, so what was I supposed to put it towards? Was I being paid because I'd broken my leg? Was I being rewarded with a check because I had been in a helicopter crash? That didn't make sense to me. Um, uh, to me, I wanted to be treated as if you know, I'm the same person with the same abilities, the same aspirations, and despite my disabilities, despite the things that I've been through, and if anything, those disabilities, instead of hindering my progress, will help me because I've learned from them. I've learned and to persevere. I've learned to you know, overcome difficulties, and I can apply that in my daily life and feel that I'm a stronger person. So let me prove to you that I'm a stronger person. Challenge me. Test me. You know, if a student studies for his exam really, really hard, uh, spends all night studying for the exam, he's got everything nailed, and then the exam is really easy, or they cancel the exam and everybody gets A's, where's his sense of accomplishment? Where's his sense of pride? The, 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 Satisfaction is not in the grade, the A, for this student. The satisfaction is in learning the material and then showing his teacher and his classmates that he knows this material. Now for me, the satisfaction isn't in getting some money. The satisfaction isn't in you know, doing everyday things again. There is some satisfaction in that as I progress, but once I've recovered to the you know, to, as far as I'm going to recover. The satisfaction comes in and someone challenging me and saying, do this now, do that now. <laughs> and in this case, continue to serve your country. And, and to me, the only way that I can really feel that sense of accomplishment is if I meet that challenge.